Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to make a colander on the pottery wheel. This is one of my favorite all-time projects because it's really useful. Uh, a mini version of this would be like a berry bowl and I have a lot of those and really enjoy using them. But today I'm going to show you how to make a larger bowl that you would use for like straining pasta. So let's dive in. I think you're going to like this one a lot. So I'm just going to narrate this section of it because I've got it on a time lapse because I don't want you to have to just sit here and watch the whole throwing process or this will be like a half an hour long video. But what I'm doing right now is just centering. I did a little bit of coning, pulled it up and down twice, and now I'm just pressing with both hands to get it nice and centered. And then we're going to make the hole in the center, you know, Pretty typical if you're making a bowl or a vase or whatever. Opening it up, and I'll tell you about some of the things I did right and wrong. What I'm doing right is I'm compressing the bottom right there, but I've over compressed it. And you'll see later, I get the bottom too thin. But now I'm pulling up, and another mistake I made here is I didn't pull it out wide enough. It's almost wide enough, but colanders are very, have a very low base, and then the walls don't come quite straight up, but they're pretty steep. I mean, they don't have to be, but I like them to be pretty straight up and down. But anyway, I'm just pulling everything up. I'm compressing the rim like you want to do. Ah, the sunshine just came out. Probably getting a sunburn. It's like my first time with real sun. Pulling up the walls and thinning and so here is where I kind of get into trouble a little bit it's not the end of the world but I keep kind of pushing the envelope and pulling it out and kind of defying gravity and then see I try to kind of salvage it by wetting my whole arms and hands and try and squeeze it back in that's never a great plan that means you've gone too far but it worked out all right you can see a tiny bit of a wobble in there but anyway, did a little ribbing and then I cut through and you can actually see the wire come up on the cut. It's a little sketchy. Okay, so that's the bowl part. Now I'm gonna let this rim dry to leather hard. As soon as that's dry enough that I can flip it over, I'll flip it over, get the bottom dry to leather hard, trim it on the wheel, and then I'll get a drill, or you can use a hole punch, but I like to use an electric drill just cause it's fun and easy and drill a bunch of holes in it, follow a pattern or don't follow a pattern, doesn't really matter, and then we'll have our colander. Okay, now we're going to take the bat. So this has been drying for a while. It's been out in the wind and the sun, and I've had it spinning on the wheel like this for a couple of hours, and that wind will dry it out super fast. That's not your ideal scenario. I'm just doing that for the sake of this crazy outdoor throwing experiment. Um, but normally this would dry in a cool place for, you know, maybe six hours before this rim is, is uh, leather hard enough to flip it. But I'm going to take this and this. So I just made a new uh, bat too. This is bigger. So I'm going to sandwich it. Just set this on. And then you squeeze the two very gently together, right? And then you squeeze and flip. And then you set that one down so it's stable. And you can kind of brace this as you gently pull up. Sometimes you'll have to recut it before you do this. I did, but I just didn't show you that part. And then you lift that guy off. Let me get a better angle so you can see. Now I can leave it on this bat to dry some more. Shift it into the center. It's pretty good along here, but th now this part needs to get leather hard. So I will probably secure this to the wheel again. Uh, yeah. And then I will spin it slowly again. The reason you turn it is because 
So let's say you're trying to speed dry something in front of a fan, which I never recommend because that's a good way to make cracks in your pots. But say you just were desperate, which we all are at some times. So you want this to be rotating so that it dries evenly. In this case, I have the wind. It's a natural fan. It needs to dry evenly. Okay. I'll see you back in another hour. Oh my gosh. I just realized that the camera was, wasn't on. I turned it on, but it, I must have bumped it or something. I was just trimming this. Ah. Oh. I'm so mad. Okay. You know what? Let me just tell you what I did. And it'll be fine. Because you can still do it. It'll be fine. Okay. Here's what I did. We have this guy flipped over. I trimmed it like you would a normal bowl, right? Anchored it, centered it, trimmed it. Zzz, left a foot on it, you know? Cut the foot out. Cut the foot out. Smoothed everything up. Then I took this tool right here and I, here I'll show you like this. I cut this piece out, I cut this piece out, this piece out, and this piece out. You need these so that when the water is pouring out of these bottom holes, it's also going to come out these holes to your drain. Otherwise, this will kind of tend to suction to your sink, the bottom of your sink, and the water will pull up in there, and then it'll fill up the bottom of your colander, and it will have to come out these side holes. Just trust me when I say, put these drain holes in here. Drain notches in the bottom of your foot. It also makes your pot lighter, which is nice. Then, I drilled the holes. And you know what? I'm going to do a couple more holes just so you can see what I did. Because I'm so frustrated that my freaking camera died. Okay. I pulled this out before I started trimming. So that everyone could be nice and intimidated by the idea of using... A Makita on a piece of pottery but here's what you do when it's nice and leather hard which it's really leather hard here and yeah I know that's really dry as hell and I'm sad about it because it's too thin it might survive it might not anyway set it on the lowest setting this is a 5 16ths drill bit 5 16ths right of an inch and you can see I'll hold my finger next to it so you can kind of get a sense this is also a straw, and these are almost the exact same diameter. This is kind of a regular, maybe slightly thicker than normal straw. Not quite a milkshake straw, but a straw. And, and the drill bit is a tiny bit thicker. Alright, so to do it with a drill bit, you set it on a low setting, and you feather the trigger so you go nice and slow, and you pick your spot. I'm going to go over here because I don't want to get anywhere near that. And you find your spot and you spin. And if it's dry enough, it should be dry enough that it comes off in these little uh, flakes like that. Okay? Gosh, this is going to be a lot of holes. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, it's going to drain really well. Okay, so that's how you do it with the drill bit. You can also do it with a straw, especially so it's a little softer here, and this works better in softer clay. So you kind of have your pick, and I'm just going to kind of continue with this pattern. You can either push, or if it's a little drier, you need to push and twist. Push and twist. Push and twist. And don't worry, that's going to leave a little plug in there. I'll get that in a minute. You'll see. Push and twist. Push and twist. If it's too wet, it'll stick in your straw and it'll get kind of messy. So if, if, that's, if that's the case, let it dry some more is usually the trick. Push and twist. Push and twist. Push and twist. Whoops. See, there it goes. It's sticking in there. That's okay. You can. What I do is I usually have like four or five straws and I will um, just flip it. Use the other end, push and twist. And if it sticks in both ends, then I set that one aside, let it dry a little bit. And once these are kind of a little bit drier, you just grab them and pop them out. Boom. Done. Okay. 
So we got some more holes. <laughs> That's hilarious. That looks so bad. And then I can just take a needle tool, the end of a needle tool, or anything. Uh, well, a pencil would probably be too thick. Maybe. A little dowel, whatever. Something that fits in there nicely and just poke those out gently. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Ciao. Buenos noches. Okay. So, there's your hole pattern. And I also explained that you can set up your hole pattern however you want. Don't set it up like this. That's really stupid. Um, but you can do designs with the holes. But you just need to make sure you have a, a fair number of holes in the bottom. Let's say between five holes and ten holes in the bottom. This is like, what, 20? That's too many. And then you have to have a few holes down here. And, and it's good to have a couple up here, but you don't really need to get too crazy and go with holes all the way up here because most of the water is coming out the bottom. Right? That's logical. Okay. What a mess. Okay. God, does this count as a fail video? I don't even know. I don't know how to quantify it. Okay, we're going to sandwich this again. Right? So we're not just beating it up and distorting it. And then we're going to flip it over. <laughs> I can hear all the little crumb, all the little plugs falling. Okay? And then, you pull all these out gently. Right? Obviously. But you basically, okay, so, let me come in close. You can see where I did it with the drill. It's drier, and it's kind of easy to just flick these away because they're already dry. And then maybe a little smoothing with my finger like that. Maybe even take a little water to smooth it quickly. And those are good to go. But where these are kind of wetter, this is where I did the drills where it was wet. That makes a mess. So it needs to be that harder leather hard. And then this is where I did it with the straw. And it leaves these little rings, these little burrs kind of. You can either do these when they're soft, or you can wait till they're leather hard and push them in, or you can get a tool. It's good if you have a burring tool, which I don't have, but it would be kind of like the end of this thing, but pointier. So it's going to be round, but pointy on the end. And then you take the point and you stick the point in there, and you just kind of roll it a little bit. And it just whoop, blends that in. And it taper, transition and tapers those edges. Blends everything in. It's not perfect. None of this is perfect. The hardest part of making a colander is going back and fixing all these little things. Which is why I like the drill. Because, again, that's just really minimal. You know, you flick off a little bit of that. And that's pretty much done. Okay? Anyway... Sorry I missed that whole step, but I hope that recap was good enough for you. Colanders are freaking awesome. They're so functional, and it's just one of those things like, we all have used plastic colanders, and the nice thing about plastic is it's light. These are a little heavier, but they're so cool and satisfying to use when you, you know, you got to go drain your spaghetti or whatever. It's awesome. You can also throw some little loop handles, you know, just pull or roll a couple of coils and throw a couple handles on the side and you've got yourself a really freaking cool talk about good Christmas gifts right there anyway thanks for watching this one's going down in the I don't know pottery epic fail slash also kind of cool video pile I'll see you tomorrow and hopefully we'll rock it and knock it out of the park bye